everything else can wait Give me you I hope I'm not too late Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Give me you Everything else can wait Lord, give me you I hope I'm not too late Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Cause it's me, oh Lord I'm on my knees Crying out to you It's me God bless you and good afternoon each and every one of you and welcome to Glory to Glory Radio Broadcast. I am so blessed and honored to be here on this program. I do pray that this program has been a blessing to each and every one of you. It is such a pleasure. I look forward to coming on a weekly basis to encourage the people of God in the Word of God. So again, welcome each and every one of you to Glory to Glory radio program right here on Choice Radio. This is Pastor Cheryl Ashley from Kingdom Glory and Fire International Ministries. We are located right at 5809 Avenue T and that's between East 58 and East 59th Street. So we just bless you. Come get ready to receive a word in due season and I'm sure it's going to change your life. But before we get started in the word, let's open up in prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. Father, I thank you for this opportunity, Lord God, that you have allowed, Father God, to uh, be here to speak unto the ears and the hearts of your people. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to take full control of this airway. Have your way. Let your will be done in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, let every word be spoken. Let everything be done. Every words of encouragement, God, be done to bring glory and honor to your name. Father, we pray that the word will go forth deep into the hearts of your people and that it will bring forth change, Lord, as you are preparing a army of people to gather to do your will and to finish your work in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, I want to thank those that had an opportunity to visit with us uh, last Sunday. We had a guest speaker, Apostle Theo Smith with us. It was a mighty move of God. And we just want to say thank you so very much. Let me tell you something. God is up to something great. And I see the moving of God. I see the flow of God. I, I'm getting confirmation of what God is saying unto the church today. And it's so important that the body of Christ, that the believers are able to hear as it was with the sons of Essachar, that they have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church right now. See, every generation and every time that there's a word that God will release upon the people. And I believe as it was where God began to deal with men and women about faith and we know that faith is a foundation of the believer's life without faith the Bible says it's impossible to please God so we understand the Bible says the just shall live by faith we understand that we thank God for the faith movement we thank God for for the, the things that he began to unfold through generations to generation we thank God for the prosperity message we thank God for the for the love message we thank God for all those different things but I believe that this is a season and this is a time 
where God is beginning to take us back to the foundation, the foundation of our purpose of the church, the foundation of why we're here, the foundation of, of, of who we are in Christ and, and, and what God wants to do in our lives. The Bible talks about in the book of, of Psalm, if the foundation be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? And so we have to be aware, we have to be uh, uh, on the cutting edge as believers in Christ to know the exact assignment and the mission that God has given unto us. I don't want to go into that, but I'm telling you, God gave me an amazing word last week in prayer where he began to say that Jesus completed the mission that he came to earth to do. And he said, mission accomplished, glory to God. And that the mission was not impossible, but it was possible by the help of the Holy Spirit. But today, 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 I am so excited about this word that the Lord spoke to me to bring to you today. And I believe this is a word that has held up many people's blessings. I believe it's a word that holds up and blocks people from moving forward in God. And I also believe that what we're going to talk today about is also uh, a cause of many people's illnesses. And that is about offense. See, we want to be able to move in the things of God. See, we want the miracles and we want the signs and wonders and we want God to use us in supernatural ways. But I, I, there, there's a process to this thing. There is a process where God has to begin to deal with us as individual. We have to begin to search our heart to see what is in the heart of a man. I'm telling you, no matter what you try to do, you can, you can try to, to, to conjure it up. You can try to read as many books as you want about the anointing and the move of the Holy Spirit and all of that. But there's a process that must take place in your heart. You have to allow the Holy Spirit to develop the fruit. Did you hear that? The fruit of his spirit inside of you. And one thing as believers we cannot harbor in our hearts is is offense because offense leads to unforgiveness and unforgiveness leads you to come out of the will of God. I don't want to go ahead of myself, but I'm going to take it. It may take this week and next week, but I believe this word is going to set many people free. I remember when the Lord allowed me to share this message with the congregation and they were so, uh, I'm telling you, they were free from many issues. So what we're going to talk about is offense. And I believe that as you begin to hear this word and be reminded of this word, allow this word to be sown into your heart, you are going to be blessed. You're just going to be a different. See, many of you, listen, you're running to different people and you're, there's a blockage in your life. Glory to God. See, I remember a situation. Hear me clearly. This had to do with someone that I love very dearly. And they're going through a, a situation of illness and infirmities. And one of the things the Lord said to me, he said, that person has to release unforgiveness. And I said, wow. I said, the unforgiveness is blocking the healing. I said, wow. And so I had an opportunity to speak to that individual. And I said, listen, you got to begin to release these things. It's not hindering the person, but it's hindering you. So I'm telling you, I know because I've experienced it, even from my own self, what the spirit of offense can do to you, which leads you to unforgiveness. We're going to take our time today. I hope you're ready. Get your Bible. This is the time to get into the word of God. I am telling you, the word of God is what we need in this last day. I thank God for preaching and I can preach and all that, but I thank God my foundation has always been the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. <clears throat> so <clears throat> one of the most potent weapons that Satan uses in this hour, in these last days against the people in the world and in the church to steal their destiny and to steal and to destroy their lives is the weapon of offense. We're going to get to the definition of that. But hear what the Bible says. The weapons of our warfare, that alone tells us that we're in a warfare, but we have the victory already. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down vain imagination, and every eye thing that exalt itself against the knowledge 
knowledge of God. Anything at all, I don't care what it is, that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, that is contrary to the word of God that we see in Genesis to Revelation, you don't have to receive it. God has given us all things that pertains unto life and godliness in order for us to live a victorious Christian life in the earth. That's it. We don't have to add to it. We don't have to delete it. All we have to do is to be obedient to it and to receive the blessings thereafter. That's it. It's just that easy. Now, let's take a look. I am so excited. I, I can feel it already that some people are going to be set free from what God is about to do in your life. Amen. Now, we are living in the days, you got to understand that, we are living in the days of crucifixion of the church. Not just the world against the church, but, hear this, the church against the church. My God. And now, we, there's several examples, but I'm going to go through, I'm gonna, gonna only go through a few of those examples because I think we may have to continue with this lesson next week. Why? Because it's an important thing. Many of you have been stuck and you have been hearing me preach and minister the word of God about God wanted to bring you into that place of fullness, bring you into that place of prosperity and blessing. And this is one word that I don't hear preach much in the pulpit is about offense. Now hear me. Let me give you one example of offense. Offense happened. A matter of fact, let's go to the foundational scripture of offense. It's found in Luke 17. Let's take a look at that. Luke 17, beginning at verse one to five. If you have your Bibles, turn with me. And the word says, then said he, which is Jesus, unto the disciples. Hear this. Here's what he said to them. It is impossible that offense will come. It's impossible, but that offense will come. In other words, what he was saying to the disciples is that offense is going to come. If you're on this earth, if you're living in this world, offense is going to come to you. In other words, it's not that when offense come, but how do you deal with offense when it comes? You hear the difference? Not that offense won't come, but you have to learn as a believer how to deal with offense when it comes. The world says when somebody offends you, you cut them off and you talk evil against them. But what is it that the word says? How, what is the weapon that we ought to use against that spirit of offense that is trying to infiltrate the church. All right, hear this. But it says, woe unto him through whom they come. That word woe means judgment unto that individual that uh, causes offense to come. It, will be it, it were better for him that a milestone were hang about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourself, if thy brother, hear this, trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. Forgive him. That's the word of the Lord. Forgive him. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what, what, what somebody is saying, and you hear it all the time. Jesus, the word of God, says if someone offends you, forgive him. There's another scripture in Matthew, where the disciples asked Jesus and they said, how many times should we uh, 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 forgive someone? Seven times seven? And the Lord Jesus responded, no, 70 times seven, meaning there is unlimitlessness, <laughs> if that's a word, to your forgiveness. There is no limit to forgiving someone of an ought against you. And there's a reason for it. I hope that you're listening. This is going to be your day. This is going to be your day. You have been waiting. You have been asking God, God, why do I feel stuck? Glory to God. Why is it that I feel like God is saying, you got to begin to search your heart. Some of you may have offense or unforgiveness in your heart that you have not yet released. And God wants to set you free today. Who the son has set free is free indeed. Listen. I know I'm doing the teachings and we have so much to cover and I love to share the word of encouragement with you, but I'm telling you, you today are going to get set free. I want you to pick up that phone if you feel that you need to uh, connect with someone. It's important though that wherever you are, all you simply have to do is open up your heart and say, Lord, forgive me. I confess my sin. I repent of holding unforgiveness or offense or whatever it might be in my heart towards another forgive me that's the start of your healing that's the start of you moving forward into the things of God 
Before I go on, for those that just came on the line, again, this is Pastor Cheryl Ashley from Kingdom Glory and Fire International Ministries. We are located at 5809 Avenue T between East 58 and East 59th Street, right here in Brooklyn. I am telling you, this is the cutting edge church. God has had us hidden for, for, for a time, but now is the time that God is bringing us forward because we are a church that teaches and preaches the uncompromised word of the living God. I believe there's power enough in the word of God to change people's lives. I believe as we are kingdom ambassadors and kingdom people that we as leaders have to begin to teach the people how to live and how to be victorious as kingdom people here on the earth. And that's what we teach. We simply give you the word of God. We teach the word of God. We let you understand how important it is to to have a prayer life glory to God you cannot be a Christian and not have a prayer life let me say that you cannot say you are a believer you cannot say you're a Christian and you only pick up your Bible once a month or you only pray and if you pray for five minutes every week are you hearing me listen to what the word says also it says that you must watch and pray you must watch and pray because the temptation is going to come. Your spirit may be willing, but your flesh is weak. How do you overcome that weakness? It's by prayer. It's by building up yourself. Prayer is the lifeline of a believer. Oh, yes, it is. It is oxygen. It's breath. It's, it breathes into you the breath of life. You cannot live. You're, you're sust you have to be sustained by the word of God and in prayer. And prayer is simply communicating with God. That's all prayer is, talking one and one and just having a dialogue with him. Not all, it's not a monologue, it's a dialogue. Talk to him today and I'm telling you, God will begin to reveal some awesome things. So we begin to teach people. That's what I love to do. I love to pour into people. I love to let people know their purpose, praise God. I love to let them know that there is something that, and many times God begin to reveal the purposes and gifts and talents and abilities uh, 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 to me, pertaining to a particular person, and they begin to walk in it and they're like, wow, I've never been given this opportunity before. I never knew I could say this. I never knew the Holy Spirit could empower power me like this and it is so so I'm telling you if you are listening today I want you to know that there's more to your Christian walk it is more to your Christian walk and coming home every day turning on the television listening to bad news every day listening to the garbages done television and radio program this is a choice that you have to make that's why I love this radio program continue to pray for this radio program praise God and as long as law God allows me to be on this radio program I'm going to be here on this program and to be an encouragement to the man of God and to continue to pray for this radio program because it is given the uncompromised word of the living God so why don't you come and join us I am telling you your life will never be the same we have Sunday services every Sunday at 11 a.m. sharp I believe God is about to do some awesome and great things in our midst I don't want you to be left out of it you are going to be blessed I am telling you this is your time for your breakthrough this is your time that you're going to walk in greatness i will be right back give me you everything else can wait give me you i hope i'm not too late lord give me you Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Give me you. Ooh. Everything else can wait. Lord, give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me God bless you and welcome back to Glory to Glory radio program right here on Choice Radio. Praise God. This is Pastor Cheryl Ashley and I'm from Kingdom Glory and Fire International Ministries and I'd love for you to come and visit with us. I'm telling you. Also, if there's a prayer need, I love to pray. 
It is so important that you understand that there is power in prayer. I believe in, in, in coming together. I believe in the power of, of, of praying and, and, and seeing the breakthroughs. I tell you, I can't tell you the amount. We have to begin to uh, list the testimonies of prayers that are being answered. I'm telling you even this one testimony, and I love it, and I can't wait to uh, talk about it tomorrow. This young lady started coming to uh, the church maybe about less than a month ago, and uh, she was experiencing uh, demonic oppression for almost a year uh, in, 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 in where she lived. And she came and she connected with us. We prayed for her. We broke the chains of, 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 of hindrance. We, we took authority over every demonic activities that were happening into her life. And just uh, uh, yesterday, she told me that God resolved the situation and the individual that was living in her home literally packed up and left glory to God. And so she's walking in victory she's walking in freedom and that's what we love to do we we understand see we're not people that uh begin to pray and say well i hope it's gonna happen you see no 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 no. uh once you once you say you believe and we touch and agree with you it is over all we're waiting for is just to get the testimony and to hear the victory of what has already happened because we know once we align our faith with your faith and you're believing and we're believing with you the manifestation if it's according to the will of god you're going to see it come to pass our ministry is anointed for those that need jobs and better jobs i am telling you god is about to release the finances onto those that are able to advance the kingdom of God because he's, he's soon to come back. He's beginning to open up doors for many. So if you are in need of anything today, if you're in need of a job today, if you're in need of prayers uh, because of witchcraft, if you're in need of uh, for us to stand in agreement for you concerning immigration, if you're going through a divorce and you're going through some obstacles and you are believing God for restoration of that marriage, whatever it is, we want to stand in agreement with you. I promise you, God is going to answer your prayer by fire. Pick up the phone, 718 531 zero eight four eight seven one eight five three one zero eight four eight don't hesitate to give us a call we are receiving testimonies literally every week many of you even on the radio program have called and you are receiving testimonies you're receiving breakthroughs and that is why we are here we are here to stand in agreement we are here to stand in the gap on behalf of your situation and your problem because god wants you to be free praise god this is your time and this is your year that he's going to bring total restoration to your life praise God and I'm excited for the results already don't hesitate as I'm here uh, uh, giving you that word uh, to bring you forward into a new dimension we we'll have prayer warriors and intercessors that are standing by right now for your call 718-531-0848 hallelujah glory to God now Let's continue with this word on the fence. So as we read in the scripture, you got the foundation of the scripture. And, he, and, 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 and Jesus told his, his disciples, it's impossible that offense will not come to you. So put that in your mind right now. It's impossible that it won't come. But it's not about when it comes, but it's how you handle it when it comes. Now hear what the word offense means. In the Greek word, it means scandalon, kind of reminds me of scandalous. It means a snare. It means a noose or a trap. Offense comes to make a person feel annoyed or hurt by something or what someone has said or done to them. You see, so many people are walking around with offense. See, what the devil does is that he comes to ensnare individuals through offense. And when that happens, a person begins to do his will. Did you hear me? Not God's will, but the person begins to do the devil's will. And he begins to manifest feelings of anger, feeling of resentment, feeling of wrath, feeling of criticism, which ultimately leads to division my gosh ultimately leads to rebellion fighting and murder 
I'm not just talking murder in the natural, but also murder in the spirit. Many of you could be offended or even have been offended by people on your job. You, this, listen, offense takes place anywhere. It could be in the church. It could be uh, on your job. It could be in a marriage. It could be on a home, wherever it is, between uh, 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 siblings, offense will come. So, Look out for offenses, not when it comes. Well, when it comes, you got to know and to discern that this spirit of offense is coming to move me out of the will of God. So God is bringing this word for someone today to let you know these, there's certain things that's been hindering and that's been blocking the, the blessings and the, and, the, and the release of what's in God's hand to you. God cannot move if you are in unforgiveness to anyone that you've hurt you. You've got to release it. You've got to release them so that God can restore you. That's what offense does. Now, when we look at that, we give an example of what offense did. When we look, we're not going to go into the, uh, to the, to the word, of the, into the actual chapter, but you can document it. This was in the book of Genesis. Genesis 4, 1 to 10, it gives a story about Cain and Abel. And what happened, Cain was offended that God accepted Abel's offering over his. And as a result, we know the story, what happened. It ended in Cain murdering his, I'm sorry, yeah, Cain murdering his brother Abel. All right, so we understand that offense when it comes, it leads to unforgiveness and it also leads to harden, hardness of heart. This is not the believer's portion. Remember the word says, the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. Anything contrary to the word of God, anything that seems like it's, 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 it's causing you to operate, that's why you need the word of God. The word of God brings a gauge, it brings balance to a believer's life. If you're walking in fear, you're walking in jealousy, you're walking in the things of the flesh, the word of God tells you, you cannot uh, walk in the flesh and try to walk in the spirit at the same time you have to kill the flesh you got to deny the flesh you got to go through your get sin me some of you God is going to take through that period of time where he's beginning to open up your heart even this word is going to convict many of you because God wants to bring it to a new place in him he wants to reveal greatness to you he wants to reveal your purpose and your destiny but there is something that's standing in that way and that is offense that leads to unforgiveness you got to get rid of it you got to get it out of your system you got to get it out of your heart this is not the will of God. If a man offends you, if the Bible says, the world says, if somebody hits you on one side of your face, hit him back. <laughs> but the Bible says, if a man slaps you on one face, you turn the other cheek. See, we, but we got to be obedient to the word of God. When we begin to apply the word of God, what begins to happen? You begin to receive the, the, the power. You begin to receive the ability and the help of the Holy Ghost to do it. Listen, I never thought that I could love the unlovable. I'm telling you the truth. I didn't think I could. It took some while as I began to apply the word of God because I said, well, God, if you're telling me to forgive this person, if you're telling me not to hold on to art and not to hold on to offense, I am going to choose. Did you hear me? It's a choice. I had to choose to believe the word of God or believe what my flesh was going through or believe what I thought people were saying about me. I had to choose to release them and walk in God's power and anointing. And when I began to say, Lord, I surrender, I release them. And it's not about forgiving and don't forget. When God forgives you, it's forgiven. When God says that he has cleaned your slate, it is done. How is it that we want God to forgive us of our sins and we all know how much we mess up. We all know how much we need God every minute, every hour. But yet when a man offends us, we can't forgive them. God is speaking to someone today. Get into your word. Find out what God's word says about unforgiveness. Find out what the word of God says about offense. Your life is about to change as a result of this word. God no longer wants you to walk in offense. Here's another example of offense. This is found in the book of Genesis. I'm just going to give you the, 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 the scriptures, 37, 1 to 28. This is about the life of Joseph. Joseph was a dreamer. His own brethren, flesh and blood, his own people, his own brothers and sisters, his own uh, 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 pastors, his own brothers and sisters in the Lord, his own neighbor, church people, 
by blood by Jesus Christ wanted to what? Kill him. They figured if they could kill the dreamer, they would kill his dream. Are you hearing that? So God wants you to know today that it don't matter who you or who offended you. He wants you to release it. He wants, you bring, he wants to bring you into the fullness of what he has called you to do. But he cannot do that unless you decide to release forgiveness and, and offense, which leads to unforgiveness. Are you hearing me? Now, offense is something that causes a person to hurt, hear this again, anger or to be upset. We have all had our feelings hurt at one time or another, all of us, none of us are exempt. And you may feel insulted by someone or that an injustice was done towards you, but instead of letting it go, you allow resentment, you allow bitterness, you allow anger, you allow unforgiveness, you allow all these things to be planted in your heart. Listen to this. In order for us to deal with the root, we must begin to see. In order for us to deal, I'm sorry, with the, uh, with the fruits that we're having in our lives. In order for us to see why our, our lives seem to be barren. Why all these sickness and disease are affecting our bodies when the word of God says that you shall walk in fullness. I pray above all things that you shall prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. We have to begin to look at the root of the problem. And I believe that one of the root of the problem, especially in the believer and in the body of Christ, is this era of offense that leads to unforgiveness we cannot go forward in the power of God I'm telling you God is looking for sons of God he's no longer looking for little babies that are still on baby milk and walking in pampers and and murmuring and complaining against each other and don't know how to forgive each other and don't know how to turn the other cheek he's looking for sons of daughters that will raise up in this hour that will come against the kingdom of darkness and to begin to set souls free praise God but how are we going to do this as an army of God if all the things in our heart is, is corroded by unforgiveness and offense it's a trick of the enemy and it's a weapon that the enemy has released glory to God in in the in the in the world but especially now in the church you're talking about going to church and sister Sue wants sister, uh, uh, next to brother who because they offended them let me tell you a simple how offense goes you're talking about walking in a church one day and you say hi to brother so-and-so and all of a sudden you stepped on brother so-and-so toe by accident but now you didn't know that you stepped on brother so-and-so accident to cause him to be offended and so all of a sudden brother so-and-so is no longer talking to you and you're wondering how brother so-and-so is 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 uh no longer walking around you and every time he sees you he walks on the other side and you to yourself you're figuring why i don't understand how brother so-and-so he don't want to talk to me i don't know what i did I and, met, and now brother so-and-so have you up he's been offended by the very fact that you stepped on his toe and you had nothing to do with it a matter of fact you didn't even know it that's what ha most offense happen most offense happen when other people don't even know about it they're not even aware of it but yet the other person holds on to that offense and says, ah, you know, they hurt me. And who do they think they are? And, you know, I'm such and such in the church. And, you know, who are they to come and say this to me? Offense leads to unforgiveness. Now, uh, uh, if, they were, if they were obedient to the word of God, and if their brother or sister, according to what we're about to read right now, offends you, the Bible says, to go to them and get it right. If you don't go to the individual immediately, what happens is there's a seed of offense that leads to unforgiveness that begin to grow in your heart. And as it begin to grow, guess what happened? It's no longer a seed, but now it becomes a stronghold. It becomes a stronghold in your life. It's time to be free, people of God. Hear me, listeners. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what they've done to you. I don't care what the abuse was. I don't care what the hurt was. I don't care what the uh, 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 resentment was. I don't care what the rejection was. God says to you today, it is time to let it go. It is time to release yourself out of that bondage. God wants to bring you into a new place with him. And 
and because of offense it's causing you even not to hear his voice did you know the word of God says if you cannot forgive your brother of an art he cannot forgive you so many people are in church right now I'm telling you what the Holy Ghost is saying and he's concerned about his church because we're in church and we're praying in the tongues and we're praising and worshiping God but guess what much of that is not going further than the ceiling because our heart is corroded with unforgiveness and we won't even go to our brothers and sisters and say you know what you did something that offended me and I don't know if you're aware of it but I held up unforgiveness and offense in my heart towards you and I want you to forgive me and for those that hold unforgiveness you need to go to that person and get it right you need to pick up that phone right now and get it right. Call so-and-so. Call the individual that have hurt you. Or, or if the Holy Spirit leads you to that. But first and most important, you got to ask God to forgive you of holding and harboring offense that leads to unforgiveness in your heart. I'm telling you, today is your breakthrough. Some of you might have been saying, Lord, and crying and saying, God, I don't know why everything just seemed to be decreasing in my life rather than increasing. Lord, how come it seem like I don't have no friends how, how can anybody want to be your friend if you're not showing yourself friendly come on now we got to live this world for real we got to walk this thing out for real we got to prove this word praise God for real because when we begin to do it we will get the strength and the ability to do what we can't do listen many things the Bible will say that we need to do but let me explain to you you cannot and hear me clearly live this Christian life by yourself many of you are trying to work out your salvation on your own but let me say this you have the help of the Holy Ghost the Holy Spirit of God has come to be your helper has come to be a strengthener has come to give you understanding and clarity into the Word of God so you can apply it to your life listen it's no longer these days where we're just taking our Bibles on on Sundays and we open it once a week and we see and and tell people yes I'm a believer listen to me you are not a believer unless you're really believing you're not a believer until you're applying the Word of God I need to see the fruit in your life that's what God would say to you I want to see the fruit where there is no fruit God says listen he wants to see the fruit of his word produced in your life it don't take me long to see and watch a believer that says they're a believer all I got to do is examine their life is examine their talk and I will know where they are in the realm of the spirit it don't take me long if I hear a believer talking about ah oh, murmuring and complaining here yeah, such and so and I remember they owe me this money from two years ago and all of a sudden I don't know they don't want listen it's time to forgive that debt praise God it's time to move on because God wants to put thousands of dollars in your hand and all you're thinking about is ten is a is hundred dollars forgive that person that debt I am reminded again of the Word of God in Matthew there was a man and the Lord gave a parable this is important this is so powerful he gave a parable and the Lord says uh, when the disciples ask Lord how many times are we supposed to forgive our brethren and he says 77 times 7 the Lord says no 70 times 7 and he says well there's a parable and here it is this is a parable of, of, of a king and I'm gonna put it in today's language it would be as it would be an employer to an employee and so this employer uh, uh, this employee owed <clears throat> the employer say about 10,000 dollars are you hearing me and then he said the employer went to him and said hey listen you owe me this debt and you, you need to pay up because if you don't pay up uh, you know I'm gonna put you in prison you and your wife and all that and the and the employee began to cry out and say listen no you, know, you know have mercy upon me have compassion upon me and da 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 guess what happened the employer said you know what I'm gonna forgive you of this debt I'm gonna release you from this debt did you hear that that same employee had someone that owed him some money and all that employee owed him was a hundred dollars he the employee owed the employer ten thousand but yet somebody else owed him a hundred dollars and he went to that person and he said listen you got to pay up this debt and the man did the same thing as he did to the employer are you hearing me same thing and he said to him you know I don't have it and and you know have compassion you know help me out here <laughs> and he said 
He refused to forgive that man of the dead. 100 versus 10,000. And he caused him to go into prison. He locked him up and he said, you're not coming out until you pay that debt. Now, uh, uh, some others heard about what happened. They went back to the employer and spoke to him and said, hey, listen, you know, this man that you uh, released from the debt of 10,000 has now put this man, the employer went back to him and says, how is it that you did this? How is it that you had such a heart of unforgiveness and I have forgiven you the debt but yet you could not forgive that man that debt and as a result of that that man was put into captivity. So I'm telling you, unforgiveness causes you to be in that place of captivity. It keeps you bound from the things of God. It keeps you bound from the fullness of God. Pick up that phone right now. I want you to touch and agree with our intercessors and prayer warriors. Touch and agree with us today. We can pray you through a prayer of unforgiveness to release you and to release you from that thing that you've been carrying for so long. This is is your day of release. This is your day of breakthrough. Pick up the phone, 718-531-0848. Your life will never be the same again. Stay tuned. I will be right back. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Give me you. Ooh, everything else can wait. Lord, give me you. I hope I'm not too late. God bless you all and welcome back to Glory to Glory Radio Program. I am so excited that you've been tuning in every Saturday from 4 to 5 p.m. Tell some friends about this new program. Tell them to tune in. I am telling you, your life will never be the same again. Please contact us. Let us know how much this program has been a blessing to you. Many of you have called. Many of you have also uh, went on our Facebook. And you can be a part of that too. I'd love for you to visit us on our website as well. And we are on www.kingdomgfim.org. And if you're on Facebook, uh, you can go on to that on Facebook and it's on the Cheryl Williams Ashley. All right. You are going to be blessed. Come and visit with us. Listen, what you are receiving is what we teach the believers every day. Every time we come together Wednesday, we give them the word. We teach them how to be empowered in the word of God. We teach them who they are in Christ Jesus. We teach them how to walk in love and not to walk in all these baggages of the flesh. And this is what it's all about. That's what our ministry is all about. So if you're sick and tired of just going through the motion and not having any breakthroughs in your life, God wants to bring you into a new dimension. Why don't you come and visit with us? I'd love for you to visit with us tomorrow. We have the 11 a.m. service tomorrow at 5809 Avenue T between East 58 and East 59th Street, one block away from Kings Plaza. If you need to get directions to the church, don't hesitate to give us a call right now. 718-531-0848. And remember, as I mentioned before, at the beginning of this, of this program, if you have a need for immigration, I'm telling you, God is using us much in the era of seeing people uh, uh, come out of bondage of immigration problems, seeing people uh, restore their marriages are coming together, seeing people, a matter of fact, healing and the miracles are happening in our church. And that leads me to our next upcoming event. I am telling you that God is doing awesome things in our lives and I'm humbled by it because God is simply just using, looking for a yielded vessel to use. And that's, that's all that I am. I've yielded my body to God. I've yielded my life to God. I've given everything up. I've surrendered my will to God. I had to surrender how people treated me or what people said about me. I had to release them from that. And I had to say, God, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. The Bible said, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. And many times I had to turn around and pray for those that offended me. I had to turn around and pray for those that despitefully used me or abused me. And that's 
that's what the word says. So we got to begin. So when you come to kingdom glory, you are being taught how to walk the walk for real. You're not just listening and you're not just not applying it, but we're seeing people's lives change by the power of the word of God. Let me tell you, if you're coming, I want to put a free gift in your hands. Visit with us. Your life, the experience of the miracle signs and wonders. We had a mighty move of God last Sunday. God, God shifted the atmosphere and miracle signs of wonders. People began to get healed in their bodies. This brings me to what we're about to do in the realm that God is bringing us into, which is a supernatural. I believe God wants to see the book of Acts into action again in this generation. And I believe, as God said to us last week, that the baton has been passed on to those uh, in this generation that will, 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 will choose to pick up that mantle of great men and women of God that has passed on. But we are it. We are the ones that God wants to empower by his spirit. We're the ones that God wants to use to preach the uncompromised word of God. We're the ones that have to go out of the four corners of our, of our church to influence and to impact the seven systems of the world. We are it. And if you say yes to God, God is going to use you. He's going to clean you out. He's going to take all that guck out of you. He's going to take out offense out of you. He's going to take out jealousy out of you. Go through the process. Go through your Gethsemane and allow God to do a work in your heart so he can use you as a great and mighty soldier of the living God. Hallelujah. There is no time to play church. Glory to God. Every person is needed in the body of Christ. Every hand's on deck in this season. Are you hearing me? So now, next Wednesday... I am excited. March 9th, we're having our first midweek miracle revival service. You don't want to miss it. God has released the supernatural in our ministry. People are being healed. I'm going to be sharing testimonies in the near future of people that had sickness in their bodies, that had cancer in their bodies, that had, had issues with their eyes. We had this one young lady that came and, and, and last several weeks ago and, and the doctor told her that she was going to be blind in one eye and we prayed for her, praise God, and she's seen well. So things are happening, back pain, God is healing back pain. So I want you to come out this Wednesday, bring the sick bring the lame God is going to touch you supernaturally if you only believe all things are possible your situation your sickness is not unto death but God wants to use it for his glory come out don't hesitate this Wednesday yes at Kingdom Glory, Fire International Ministry, Midweek Fire Revival uh, Meeting of uh, Miracle Signs and Wonders will be taking place. The glory of God is going to overshadow us. I believe and I'm expecting people to walk out of, uh, of, 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 of um, wheelchairs. I'm believing to see blind eyes, deaf ears unstopped. I am believing for your miracle. Come and believe and watch God move in your situation. The time will be for 7.30 p.m. this coming Wednesday, March 9th. If you need to get further information about that, again, don't hesitate. 718, give us a call, 5310848. Also, the end of the month, uh, March 31st and April 1st, we are having also a conference, powerful conference. You don't want to miss it. It's taught, it's, 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 the theme is walking in kingdom dominion. And what God has been putting in my heart is the body of Christ doesn't understand the authority. They don't understand who they are and they don't know who God is. And once they do, listen, you got to understand uh, uh, kingdom living for kingdom dominion that's what we're going to teach it's going to empower you miracle signs and wonders i'm telling you it's always followed by the word of god because we preach the word of god and signs follow the preaching of his word make sure you mark your calendar for those two up in if, upcoming event you don't want to miss what god is doing in this season amen yes and so what i want to leave with you today is for you to understand one very thing I'm talking about even in churches, people get offended as I mentioned before. And one of the things that people do when they get offended, some of them leave the church because they get offended maybe because they don't want to uh, 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 you know, listen to what the pastor may be saying or maybe the pastor is trying to correct them and all of a sudden they get offended by what the pastor said to them and they just decide to leave, they get offended. But do you know that there are times when offense will come and sometimes the Lord allows offense to come to kill your own flesh. 
You see, because you've been crying out, God, use me, Lord. I, I want to be used by you. I want you to fill me with your power. I want to lay hands on the sick and all these different things. But God is trying to get all that thing out of you. And so the devil is moving quickly to counteract the dead flesh in the body of Christ by killing offense. And so he wants to increase that spirit of offense in the church. But we must be alert in the realm of the spirit. We must be alert around us to know that when offense come, Jesus said it's going to come, but it's not that when it comes, but how you handle offense when it comes. Are you hearing me? I pray this word is really uh, being a blessing to someone. Now, when people are offended, guess what they do? They justify their act of offense and they move away from God. They move away from the things of God. They move away from the purposes of God. Let me, get, let me share with you a few things that offense does. One thing offense does is this. It lose, you lose tragedy of the battle. In other words, that what you're believing God and God is beginning to show you, you know, it's just like in the days in, in the book of Chronicles with Jehoshaphat. He had to get the strategies from God and how to come against and fight the enemy. And so when you move in offense, it causes you to lose this tragedy. Offense is also a trap of the enemy. Offense will take you away and take respect and authority away from those that have authority over you. Did you hear that? Offense will take away the respect and authority of those that have authority over you. All of a sudden you're disrespecting uh, your pastor, your leaders. Uh, why? Because you have offense in your heart that leads to unforgiveness and now your heart is, is, um, it's, it's, um, your heart is, 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 is now contaminated with offense and, 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 and unforgiveness and now you need to get rid of that. Offense makes people leave what belongs to them. Offense will make you sick. I'm talking about people that hold on to unforgiveness and, and, and offense. It causes sickness to your body. So many of you are looking for healing. I'm telling you, that might be the root of your problem. You know, it's not just going to pray and the prayer is going to take it away. God, today's, today's message and encouragement to you is to search your heart. Are you holding unforgiveness in your heart today? Have you held up and have you kept somebody in bondage today? Let me read something else to you. This is very, very powerful and what offense does to an individual. Hear me clearly. When you forgive, let's go back to this. When you forgive somebody, it means to stop feeling angry or resentful towards someone for an offense, flaw, or mistake that they may have caused you. Forgiveness in God's eye is to wipe the slate clean, to pardon, to cancel a debt. Forgiveness is not granted because the person deserves to be forgiven. Instead, it is an act of love, mercy, grace, and obedience. Hear that word. Obedience is another whole lesson and teaching that I'm going to go into another time. But the body of Christ is going to come into another level of obedience unto the word of God. Forgiveness is an act of your will, not your feelings. Did you hear that? Forgiveness is an act of your will, not your feeling. Here it is again, the same word. It's a choice that you make to release that person from the wrong that they have caused you. It is not for their benefit that you release them, but it's for your own benefit so that you can be healed. You can be healed emotionally. You can be healed physically. You can be healed mentally. I'm talking to somebody out there. God is speaking to you and he's letting you know today that you have to come into that place of releasing what others have done for you and to you. My time is almost up. I never want to leave without giving each and every one of you an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as Lord. I am telling you, even as you come today, those that are listening, those that have just tuned in and you thought it was by accident, but it's by divine point appointment that you are listening. If you are not a believer, I want you to know today that Jesus loves you and he's ready to release you from the debt of any 
anything that you have done. He's ready to forgive you. He's ready to welcome you into the kingdom. For those that are listening now, if you are a backslider and you need to come back to God, it's no more time to backslide. It's no more time to fall back. It's time now for you to press forward into God. I would like for you to pray this pr uh, a simple prayer with me. And the Bible says that in Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you confess uh, the Lord Jesus and believe in his heart that God rose him from the dead, you shall be saved. Simple as that. Whosoever believe it on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Just that simple. It's some supernatural miracle of God that when you say these words and believe it in your heart, that God comes into your heart for real and your, your, your life has now been changed uh, from, from darkness into light. Will you pray with me now? Praise God. Repeat this after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you today a sinner. I repent and I ask that you forgive me and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for me and for all humanity over 2,000 years ago and he's now seated at the right hand of the Father. I believe as an act of my confession, I am asking now, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Change my life from this moment on. I surrender all unto you. Not my will be done, but your will be done. I believe I receive your forgiveness by faith. I believe I am now born again. I believe I'm a child of God in Jesus' name. Glory, glory to God. I celebrate with you. If you have said those simple prayers, please, please give us a call. You need to get into a strong Bible-believing church. You need to begin to grow in God. You need to begin to develop in God. You need to begin to mature and understand the basics of Christianity, which is your walk and foundation of faith. And we'd love for you to come and visit with us. We have uh, uh, lessons and, and programs uh, already designed for new believers to help them along their way. But more importantly, I want you to call 718 5310848 we want to get a some literatures in your hands to begin to help you along your new walk with the Lord all of heaven is rejoicing and we as a believer is also rejoicing with you for those that have come back to the Lord welcome back into the kingdom we love you and I'm telling you one more opportunity come and visit with us tomorrow don't hesitate just press yourself into a miracle tomorrow 5809 Avenue T our one block away from King's Plaza, five blocks from Flatbush Avenue. But we're about to get off the air, but you can give us a call and we'll give you further information at 718-531-0848. God bless you. I pray that this message was a blessing to you. And we're going to continue this message next week. There's so much more to say. And I pray that you were blessed in Jesus' name. Never forget, Jesus Christ is Lord. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Choice Radio Ministries, P.O. Box 30016, Brooklyn, New York, 11203. That's Choice Radio Ministries, P.O. Box 30016, Brooklyn, New York, 11203. We thank you for your support in spreading the Word of God. Ladies and shoppers, get these high-quality and tasty brand products. Enjoy deep discount prices on Friola brand pure refined cooking and frying oil with no cholesterol, no trans fat and it's less greasy and less fattening. Friola brand